Hello and welcome to a chess ML. Chess school listen session. But this is the kind of school where it is absolutely okay, recommended even to those of or not pay too close attention and only let that exact knowledge seep into your brain that your brain find the most comfortable at any given moment. Today I will be playing some online blitz and sharing my thoughts while I do it and I will be playing on this thing here, the chess op board. So I will open up the chess op app and I would like to play a new game. I would play as a random color. The time format could be five minutes plus five seconds for every move. I would like to play online on leeches against someone random. Okay, we have the white pieces. We will play pawn to d4 and open up the game. And now, after d5, we will play pawn to c4, the explosive move. Boom. And now we have the queen's gambit. And while we wait for our opponent's move, let's just do a little bit of housekeeping. If you like this board and you would like to get it, then you can use my affiliate link that's in the description. And you will get a 10% discount and also support this channel. Now, after bishop to e6, we know that is not a recommended move. I'm not sure exactly what the best way to combat this move is, but I'm thinking just maybe capturing the pawn um, and gain some nice development. So, I guess we will see bishop takes and we can then play knight c3 uh, threatening to exchange the bishop and we can also now prepare with knight c3 play pawn to e4 and take control of the center. Our opponent is in the tank a little bit here thinking a long time about the move. Uh, have they abandoned the game? Maybe? Okay, so they do capture with the bishop after a long, long think. This is a blitz game, so maybe that think was uh, not super advisable for them. I think I'm not going to just go ahead and capture the, the bishop. Uh, I think actually... Um, or will I, I mean, also a move like f3 is tempting here to try to punish this uh, setup that black is going for. So I'll go f3 because I want to play e4. And because my opponent has neglected uh, putting pawns in the center and has instead put these pieces without uh, any pawns to help them out. And I think maybe we can try to exploit that. So we are now firmly in control of the center. Um, the question is how to best proceed from here. Um, so we should have a scheme of development for our pieces. Maybe we would like to play something like bishop to e3. That looks very sensible, a very sensible square for the bishop also protecting d4 so that if we feel like moving the queen 
we will not leave this undefended. Okay, a4, very uh, surprising move, I would say. I guess a move like bishop c4 makes a lot of sense now that our opponent can play a6 to support b5 to chase this bishop away. And uh, I think we have a very, very good position. We can already contemplate moves like pawn to d5 and try to attack our opponent. Okay, so we see bishop b4 pinning the knight. That's not really a problem, I would say. I will reinforce the knight with the other knight, so it can be recharged, 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 and just play some some solid positional play chess, you know. Do like Capablanca advised, Capablanca, 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 and he advised that if we don't know the opening, we should put out our pieces in a rapid and efficient manner. So after we are now castling, we have almost completed development and we have a very good position with nice control of the center here. And our opponent is giving up the bishop pair. Now we have both bishops. This dark squared colored bishop should be very strong now. Uh, and of course, opening up the game could benefit us. A move like queen c2. Okay, knight here. So that would attack the queen on c2. Um, so we could contemplate playing pawn to a3 first to sort of just say what are you doing knight just say okay you just can't get into the game in any sort of meaningful way the knight here on a6 uh, because we have taken away all its forward squares um, and move like rook c1 is on my radar I'm not looking for forcing lines to gain a an advantage here because uh, probably there will be some tactical shots with my superior development but with the way my opponent is playing 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 I feel like I should be able to get a comfortable game just playing sensible moves not getting behind on the clock just just you know following the chess principles put the rook on the half open file uh, take away squares for our opponent um, now I feel as if we should maybe try to go for some checkmate against our opponent because we have so much control of the board so even something very simple like queen d3, bishop a2, bishop b1, queen h7, checkmate could could be on the cards. Uh, that threat could actually be pretty tough to meet, maybe. Um, and let's just think a little bit about what we would do against knight d5, which is... Uh, very logical move our opponent could play. Okay, instead they went for knight h7. So let's try for this crude checkmate plan. Queen d3, bishop a2, bishop b1, and with a checkmate threat. So how will our opponent try to meet that? If we see them try to play something like pawn to f5, okay, so knight here, um, 
pawns to f5 will just be met by bishop takes e6 check um, so I think I will continue with my plan uh, at this moment in time and and after bishop b1 I will have the threat of bishop takes knight pawn takes bishop and queen h7 checkmate so let's see what our opponent will try to do against that okay bishop here so we will go for the plan now and if they play now we don't have bishop takes e6 check against okay that's a big mistake by our opponent here because now we capture this knight and uh, our very sensible slow positional chess has yielded a big advantage our opponent didn't even uh, capture the bishop and this is of course checkmate thanks for the game esteemed opponent i think we were able to win this game in the most relaxing re relaxing fashion possible we uh, we just played according to the principles played a very very simple scheme of development uh, and we didn't i don't think i calculated almost any lines i just came up with the concept of checkmating like this after i had established a very very strong position so uh, should we go to the next game we play a new game i can be any color like to play on leeches five minutes plus five seconds and here we go okay our opponent got the white pieces they play pawn to e4 Okay, let's try out the Sicilian defense. Maybe we can get into the dragon variation. I have, I have an, a, an, a video on how to play that. Uh, so if our opponent plays pawn to d4 here, we would go into the open Sicilian. They did not. We developed the knight. Um, so now I think pawn to d4 is no longer as good um, because the strongest openings for white against the Sicilian defense particularly okay they are playing very sensible chess here let's break the pin um, so we are not getting into a standard dragon anytime soon but okay they kept it like so i think i will just keep a very simple healthy pawn structure and capture with the big bishop actually now we have the bishop pair you saw that in the last game as well that can be a pretty significant advantage um, and okay our opponent castles I think I will try to go for something a little slow here and play g6 to get the dragon bishop, the sniper, the one-eyed, what did I say in the video, the one-eyed super monster sniper bishop, <laughs> I think I called it uh, in, the, in my video on how to play the Sicilian dragon. So of course... Um, we are not in opening theory anymore, um, but we can still use some of the principles. Um, my next plan here should be, okay, so our opponent is getting ready to exchange this bishop for this bishop with queen to d2. And my 
plan here should be to sort of take control of this center uh, somehow. Oh, that's interesting. Bishop g5. Am I concerned with that? I, I don't think so. Um, I think uh, maybe queen c7 is a pretty logical square for the queen, where it maybe wants to go anyways. Um, so, okay, they, they are, our opponent is moving this bishop around quite a bit. Um, is this, is there something dangerous here? I, I'm not sure there is. So my only question is if I should play knight to e6, e7, or to f6. And I, I'm not sure why exactly, but I do feel that e7 is a little bit better for some reason. Um, maybe it's because I really want to play pawn to d5 at some point, and and maybe with that move being recharged by the knight on e7 instead of ef6. Okay, so this move now does not attack the knight, so therefore I can just play uh, d5. And if you are a new or improving chess player, uh, there is a little bit of wisdom here that you may not you know, a lot of of the new or improving chess players, they they think that it, chess is like checkers, like that you have to capture. I'm not sure if you have to capture in checkers, but there is like this. You, and, and and the pawns, a lot of the time, they can just go past the other pawn, and that's usually uh, a very good option. You know, don't limit yourself too much. Okay. And now I think we could just castle. I don't think that's the strongest, strongest, strongest move in this position. Okay, my opponent is just moving this bishop all over the shop. Now I can win a pawn soon. Um, So I think I will develop this knight here and basically threaten to just come in and capture the e5 pawn with these two pieces here. I will, of course, be loathed to give up my one-eyed super monster sniper bishop, but uh, but it a pawn is a pawn is a pawn is a pawn. So unless I am missing something, we are winning a pawn here, and also we will be attacking the knight here, after uh, knight takes here, and queen takes, and now we are attacking this knight. Um, and we can play pawn to d4, opening up this bishop will, that will be our new super monster sniper bishop, and maybe even be uh, better. So, okay, they are attacking our queen. We can, of course, go and capture the knight, but I'm thinking maybe we should throw the check first. Uh, because the only way they can block it would be with rook f2, and then we just capture the knight, but maybe that helps their position a little bit. No, I I think I kind of like it. I think I kind of like this check here. And uh, if they go to the 
light squares, of course, we now have the option of a discovered attack by moving this pawn here uh, at some convenient point. Um, so it, it's not going to be right now because we want the queen to be able to come back and participate in an attack against the king. Right now we can just try and win more material with this fork of the queen and the rook. Okay, here. And does the discovered check do something really good here? Um, not really. So I think we just capture the rook and if they capture with the queen we have queen takes c2 like so and uh, our position is well to say it's winning would be an understatement uh, so Okay, they try for this. Um, I mean, let's just chase that away. We have no reason to um, to risk anything at all. Our game is so so easily winning here against. Okay, they go back against Muhammad is his name, okay. Um, so let's do the discover check. So there's basically only one move that makes any kind of sense, which is King G1. Now I will try Queen D2 with the idea of going to to e2 check um, and uh, yeah our opponent has yeah it's uh, it's going to be very very tough for them to like this move is actually maybe the worst they could have played because now this check leaves them with one legal move which is queen f2 and then we can capture the rook like so, with check. Uh, and now they have to go back with the queen again. Um, or oh, they may also just resign the game here, uh, because uh, they there is just no way they would have to sort of magically transport the queen to g7 in order to create uh, some checkmate um, threat. Uh, which is not really likely that that will happen. Capture here. There's a long way for the queen to get to, to g7. Um, so... We can just go ahead and pick off the pawns. Okay, that's an interesting move. Uh, just sacrificing the bishop for maybe for no reason at all. Um, I think we just capture it like so. so. And um, yeah, it doesn't seem that our opponent has too many moves. I think we have a pretty simple. Okay. So this here is a sort of a, a desperate measure. Should I be cheeky and play uh, queen f3? Uh, no, that's a little bit too uh, disrespectful. We'll just do this and here. And what is the easiest 
Road to Checkmate. I guess it's Bishop F3. Um, with the idea of So is there a faster mate here? Or is it just check? And then mate on G2. Check. I don't think, I think maybe that was the fastest. It was the simplest anyway. So checkmate. And thank you for the game to our esteemed opponent. And uh, yeah, we're having fun. Or are you asleep, or are you just dozing off in the black and white jungle of the 64 squares? Whatever you do, it's just perfect, as long as you are enjoying yourself and being relaxed. Okay, a new game. We would like to play any color. Five minutes plus five seconds, I think works very well so we won't get long drawn out games where uh, we have to wait a long time if our opponents will disconnect or something but also it's not like we are playing bullet we are relaxing after all so five minutes plus five seconds and let's go we have the white pieces So, pawn to d4, we've seen that move b4, but we are not going to play pawn to b4. So, how will our opponent respond? How will our opponent called Woody Magnus respond? So now I will play the best move in the whole world, which is pawn to c4, because even the chess world champion cannot handle this position. It's actually true that the chess world champion Magnus Carlsen, not Woody Magnus, but Magnus Carlsen, resigned again in this position because this opening setup with pawn to d4 and c4 against knight to f6 is just too strong. Or maybe he had some other reason for resigning that game. Who knows? Who knows? Our opponent is really taking their time thinking about what move to play in this very standard opening system. So maybe they are inexperienced or maybe they have connectivity issues. Let's see what happens. Okay, they play pawn to c6, maybe going for uh, some set up like a Slav. That's exactly what they did. Can I play my pet system against the Slav here? I think I will try. I'm not sure I can. I'm not sure if I actually can transpose into the only opening preparation I have against this. Um, but yeah, maybe I can. So here I play. Uh, here I play Knight f3 and in some cases I can play bishop f4 and queen b3 and uh, get some pretty wild attacking chess going on so let's uh, let's see what our opponent will try out in this seemingly seemingly that's keyword seemingly calm and uninteresting opening with just these two knights and this pawn and we are fighting for the e the e squares the e5 and the e4 squares trying to contest them okay yes so i think that we will now be able to get a very strong attack with uh, some patterns that are very much like my pet system 
in the exchange Slav. Because I believe that this move here, bishop to g4, is not particularly good. It, uh, it leaves b7, you see. It leaves b7. So that after queen b3 here, uh, it can be a little tough for black to defend. And I think I, in many, many positions, have a move like pawn to e4, gambiting that pawn. Okay, this is very interesting because they didn't actually protect the pawn that I can now come in and capture. And uh, I think my opponent is in deep, deep trouble. So this is not the uh, the most advanced. This is not the most advanced version of well, how to say this. Uh, the patterns, the attacking patterns I'm going with in this exchange Slav. Uh, but it is, you know, it is, you know, you you do get the queen out, attacking uh, b7 and. Usually you will have to convert that pressure into something a little bit more uh, uh, advanced. Uh, but you can get an advantage out of that. But of course you can also just go ahead and capture the b7 pawn. If um, if um, if your opponent doesn't defend it, and you can, of course, then go ahead and checkmate with this knight and this queen here on good old f7. So that was, <laughs> that kind of shows that uh, you can have a seemingly calm opening position, like uh, I was trying to transpose into the exchange Slav. Uh, but, you know, if uh, if your opponent knows, or if you know the subtleties, like what are the what are the things to watch out for in this particular position, it can go downhill very, very quickly, like it did for our opponent here in, the, in this game. There was not a lot of moves to win that one. You know, there's something about, and I know I'm biased because I'm actually selling this thing, discount, if you use the link in the description. So I'm biased towards this chessboard here. But there's something about playing, like you can always get an opponent to play because it's online, but it's a real chessboard. It, it just feels... It's so satisfying and so much more beautiful to look at somehow. And I think maybe, maybe that's just me, but I think I play a little bit better on a physical board. Um, but that's probably just uh, some sort of bias going, going on there. Okay, let's uh, start up a new game. Online, leeches against someone random. I can be any color. Five minutes plus five seconds. Let's go. We get the privilege of the white pieces again. We open with a pawn to d4. Now maybe we will get a very, very quick game. If you've seen my uh, video on the Queen's Gambit, you will see on the different responses to pawn to b4. You will maybe have seen my discussion of this uh, opening system, the Dutch, uh, where uh, you can win against black very, very quickly when they try to go for this bishop here because they do not fall for the trap. So the trap would be if they try to play pawn to f4. Uh, trying to trap the bishop instead of playing this knight move you then play pawn to e3 they capture the bishop and then queen h5 is checkmate now I will just play 
pawn to e3 to meet f4 with pawn takes pawn because queen h5 is no longer checkmate it can now be adequately met by uh, knight takes queen and i think we will try to put on a little bit of pressure on the f5 pawn here um they do protect that um should i play bishop f5 castles no that doesn't seem very strong i think i will play pawn to c4 that's not because it's necessarily the most ambitious or the strongest move in the position but i can now get a type of position that i am very uh, familiar with so i play these d4 c4 e3 queen's gambit setups all the time and after castles here i think i can try maybe a plan that i use a lot and uh, that would be h4 just trying to hack my opponent to bits uh, by trying to develop this rook here on h1 without even moving it thus saving some tempi and uh, getting ahead of development getting ahead in development okay so we see pawn to pawn to d5 g4 that's that looks like a potentially quite weak move uh, the the pawn center here of from, from black side is looks pretty uh, static and a lot of the dynamism is lost here uh, maybe a move like pawn to e4 i could have played um, trying to be a bit more aggressive but i i really like uh, my position a lot already and i will try not to get behind on the clock too much and just play some sensible sensible attacking uh, positional chess where i try to be a little bit aggressive but i don't go for critical lines um i don't go for okay so knight here uh that me i mean it's a legal move and as such we have to respect it but it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem to me as if it's really doing that much i'm thinking queen to c2 is a normal kind of move to have and also queen to b3 could be pretty good um i i like I like queen to c2 a lot uh I, I don't know it it feels like it's the strongest move but i must say that rationally queen b3 looked like it had more potential but it felt like uh queen c2 just intuitively felt felt better and i played here i played a3 to not get forked by knight b4 forking the bishop and the queen um so now the question of course becomes um i will castle here the question becomes how to develop the attack from here i think a move like pawn to f3 so we are looking for just a very good pawn break we can try to use and i think pawn to f3 could be the sort of thing that we are that we are looking for okay so we have the knight defending the bishop here against this knight uh, okay now they are trying for something 
that could be exactly the right moment for them. Um, I may have severely underestimated this move. Uh, or maybe I can, in fact, just play pawn to f3. I think I, I think I can just play pawn to f3 because I also have this rook having an x-ray defense on the e4 pawn. Uh, so if we see pawn takes, pawn, pawn takes, pawn, knight takes, bishop, knight takes, bishop, bishop takes, uh, bishop takes d4, then maybe we'll have some discovered attack. Um, like bishop takes. Okay, so we see none of that. Interesting. That's kind of interesting. So... I think it's time to open the game up. Uh, now we have these two. Uh, being very, very active. Um, I think we can try to get in with an attack now. So, pawn takes and do we play I think we play, before anything else, we play rook d to f1. We're down to a minute on the clock, but we do have that sweet, sweet increment. So now I will turn down the commentary a little bit and may only talk in my opponents on my opponent's time and, and just try to regain some time on the clock. and. I think we have a very nice position. I think queen takes is good here. And then let's get in with the guys. Um, of course, if I had a move like Rook F1 here, that would be very, very, very good. Um, and I may, I may have that soon. Um, because as soon as I move this knight, F1 will be protected. Um, and with the knight on E4, I have a new protection from on Okay, so this move, let's try for this. Let's try for this. So we can now maybe play rook f1. Um, and be pretty happy with our position. Although, of course, our opponent is Okay, they do go for this. We do capture that. Is there something I missed here? Um, if there's not, if I didn't miss something here, okay, so. I think I can get in like this. So I didn't necessarily feel like playing rook f1 there because uh, that would hang the h4 pawn. With this move, I may be able to chop off the dark square bishop, which is a key defensive piece my opponent has. Um, and okay, they go back. That means I can actually. 
that means I can actually insert this move before deciding to capture on on g7 and here let's just get rid of this king takes just gain some time on the clock here we now have moves like Knight d6, Knight f6, um, so yeah, it's a pretty interesting position, okay, Bishop here, how about, how about Knight here? Taking some squares. The queen will have to go somewhere, not sure. Okay, here. Let's go ahead and grab a pawn. And see what we can come up with. We do have things like rook f6 maybe coming in and rook takes h6 later okay that actually won us a tempo that was not too bad um okay here let's take here and it's of course crucial that the knight defends e3 um, um, okay rook here let's try to avoid any back rank tricks although we do still have the bishop there but this also gains a little bit of tempo against the queen that can go here and maybe we can even go here so the queen will have to go back like this and we will now try to get this rook in attacking position maybe so that we can come in and capture the e five pawn uh, we can play something like bishop h7 um, but i think rook g5 is a pretty decent thread in the position um, So we are now kind of threatening to come in with this check. King here, check. So what will our opponent do? They go for that one. I think we'll try to just be solid for a little bit. That one here. It's just because we don't have so much time. So I think I was hanging my rook otherwise uh, if I didn't play so oh it's because it's doing that so check okay uh, and here here I have to take a 
say like so there so I just uh, try not to lose on time there 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 check rook takes queen takes check check and here to protect some things it goes for that check here takes here now we have 19 seconds and the winning position so that check okay here that check here and I think that's about it takes check here now we just have to find a way to exchange the queens and the game is over here and that was the way check and that's the game queen takes queen pawn takes queen now let's see if we can avoid stalemate I don't think actually that is going to be okay so it, te it tells us there was a network issue uh, and I think that network issue was that our opponent disconnected from the game because of course this position is easily winning what you do in this type of position is you choose a pawn or whatever is the easiest one maybe this one and you go and make a new queen maybe you make two new queens because you have so many passed pawns and then you just use those to checkmate and the only thing you have to be careful about is well two things don't lose on time that's the one and the other one is don't stalemate your opponent so I think I uh, have I been undefeated in this session I think maybe I was and I get the white pieces again it also helps that I have been had I have had white in almost all games okay they play the the Slav the semi-Slav and if okay no so maybe we can get the exact same opening system by trans transposition that we had in the other game no not at all because they play pawn to a6 that's what am I, what is my opponent doing here just allowing me to establish control over the center um, I think uh, I think um, this could end pretty badly for my opponent pretty quickly so I think we will see if we can get something going on f7 it looks like my opponent is not really uh, cognizant of the dangers that could lurk or could uh, result from um, from neglecting development of the pieces so much with moves like a6 and h6 um, um, but again maybe I am vastly overestimating my position I don't think so though a castle 
and the plan is to find a good square for the knight and then push the f pawn. Um, what would be a good square for the knight? How about something? A little bit slow, but trying to put it on g4. I am not sure. I think maybe just knight e1 and push the f-pawn is, is stronger, but I, uh, I like this idea of getting a knight on g4 because my opponent's development is so questionable. And I think actually I play queen, um, queen h5 first. So now I have all sorts of of attacking uh, attacking ideas. Um, is this one of these pretty insane positions where I'm just going to be okay with because this bishop is so so strong. So first of all is there like Bishop takes h6. No. So I think uh, I think in this position I'm going to play the maybe semi bizarre looking bishop uh, bishop c2. Just saying you can have the you can have the rook. Maybe I'm not even going to recapture the bishop. Bishop takes rook. Let's just check the time. Three minutes. So let's just do a bit of calculation here. Calculation, calculation. Bishop takes h6. Pawn takes h6. Queen takes h6. And how are they, uh, how are they stopping the checkmate? If they play, if they play f5, I take on Persang. I'm still threatening the checkmate. They play rook. They play rook f7. Yeah, rook f7 works. But if I don't play, if I don't play bishop takes right now, they may play bishop, they may play bishop uh, g5. So I will sacrifice this bishop now. I think this attack may not actually work out, um, but maybe it will. And I think it certainly will if they try to save the bishop. So I think they do try to save the bishop. So what? how are they going to meet bishop takes... Uh, bishop takes g7, how are they going to stop the checkmate? They are not, is the answer. So... Uh, I think also this is the, the second game we had today, 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 where, um, where you know, I just established this uh, strong pawn center uh, and a root in on the dark, on the light squares, and then had the bishop backing up the queen to deliver checkmate. Um, that's, that was a really interesting game. I mean, was that a sound sacrifice? Um, was that a sound sacrifice? So, where did I put the bishop? Here it is. So I came in here. 
this was the position. I came in here and captured here. And certainly there is no time for this move. But let's say takes. Takes. Now the only move except for of course this is just delays. I just capture it. So the only one here is this. And I have at the very least I have a draw because I can just repeat moves, chase the king around. Um, but I also have this ampersand, which is false. If you know your ah, uh, if you know your chess memes. And now in order to um, avoid the checkmate, you can try to escape like this, because this is still made. So in order to escape this checkmate, you would have to play rook here. Um, And maybe I'm just winning uh, because I have moves like queen check. And if queen moves away from the protection of the rook, we just capture the rook probably. And we'll be able to checkmate here. And if you try to protect the rook, I can capture here with check um i guess queen takes and now we can capture the bishop um and just checking if there's something i'm missing no, I think just capturing the bishop here. What's the material count? Knight cancels out, rooks cancels out, so I have lost the exchange, bishop for rook. Uh, but they have four pawns, and I have six pawns. So actually, you could say material is equal in this position. So then the question becomes, if I have uh, a strong a strong uh, position or not. So, do, uh, is my opponent trapping my queen? I don't see that. Um, I think this is just an interesting position that is very dynamic and white probably is doing very well. I mean, these two passed pawns, they, uh, they could become a menace in any endgame, even though I'm down in exchange. So yeah, uh, yeah. But let me know in the comments uh, if you think it was a sound or a just a completely unsound attack. And maybe write first, write uh, your thoughts, and then check with uh, the engine if you want to check with the engine, and then say what the engine says and compare. Like so, you can see these were like you saw my thoughts and then you share your thoughts and then we see what the engine says because like just like i'm biased towards this chessboard that you can buy with a 10 percent discount <laughs> sorry <laughs> just because i like i'm biased by this uh because i make money every time somebody buy it with my link and that informs you know of course then i like it more even though i want to be objective then i, I just you know can't <laughs> that's just a you know law of psychology and in the same way as soon as you switch on the engine as soon as you analyze with the engine as soon as you get the suggestions by basically a god tier chess player then you will no longer be able to to know what you would what you were actually thinking about the position because the the bias you get from the engine is so 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 huge um, and you know that can become a problem for your actual chess because you 
you I know this from all my own experience of analyzing analyzing a lot of things uh, but the knowledge I gain from analyzing with the engine can sometimes be sometimes be very superficial and not actually connected to my own just understanding that I have to generate myself when I'm actually playing at the board. pieces I will open with pawn to d4 and let's see what our opponent will come up with okay they play d5 we play c4 boom explosive move Let's focus on the game. I have a little pet system here where I play bishop f4. It's not a particularly uh, strong opening, but it gives a natural game. I get the bishop outside of the pawn chain because, okay, so they play bishop d6. I think I will drop this bishop back to g3 so that if they capture, I can capture with my pawn. Okay, they castle. And the point of the way I play this opening is I get this bishop outside of the pawn chain before I close the pawn chain with pawn to e3. Now this system is not particularly ambitious, it is not particularly strong, but it, it gives a quite nice end easy easy to play opening system opening setup here so our opponent seems to be doing quite well uh, playing a sort of Slav uh, or semi Slav setup here with the triangle of pawns um, now they can okay they do capture my bishop I will of course recapture and I will of course recapture with my H pawn so as to open up this rook. Now there may be attacking chances. Should I try to castle long? I think I will try that so that I can uh, maybe double up the rooks on this open file. Okay, my opponent is playing quite well I would say uh, they are now preparing to push and open up the game I think I will have to try to prevent that with a move such as knight to e5 uh, this will become double-edged very very fast and I am not altogether sure that that I am doing uh, super well out of the opening. They do capture with the knight, capture with the pawn. This have it, it gives me a pretty bad pawn structure, but it does have the one advantage of moving pieces away from my opponent's king position. Should I? Maybe just start by playing pawn to f4 just to not lose control of the center completely. Uh, maybe that's a good idea. I will put the pieces I have captured over here. 
on your left side, my right side, and the pieces they have captured on the other side. So it's symmetrical, we both have lost a knight and our dark squared bishop, but the pawn structure is anything but symmetrical. I have two sets of doubled pawns here. Uh, I have a huge concentration of a huge island of pawns over here, whereas my opponent has this beautiful snake here of pawns and no weaknesses um, to speak of. Okay, so they are going for the bishop. I'm thinking I could maybe play the check to get out of harm's way uh, with a tempo. Let's do that. Okay, so king here. Um, and maybe let's maybe let's just play pawn to g4 and uh, try to play pawn to g5 and see if we can smash up my opponent's uh, king position here, the castle. Because if, if I am to claim that I have any sort of advantage in this game, it would be that uh, my opponent has neglected the king protection, doesn't have a very fortified uh, position with a lot of soldiers at the ready uh, to defend the king. Uh, because my opponent has instead focused on having this very beautiful, okay, let's see here, this very beautiful uh, pawn structure and um, and has, you know, have this very sound developmental scheme. I think I may be getting somewhere now. I think I could potentially capture that pawn. Uh, Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, bishop takes pawn, bishop takes bishop, queen takes bishop. I should be doing very well there. Uh, then we could say pawn takes pawn, king takes bishop, pawn to f6, check. Uh, that could potentially be uh, very, very strong. We could also contemplate something like bishop, Bishop g6, rook f8, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, and now we can't capture. Uh, but I think I like this attacking idea. I think I will just go ahead and capture like this. It's a sacrifice of the bishop, but uh, maybe I will get a strong attack so king takes so now the question is if i should play pawn takes uh pawn check but i don't think so i think it's better to play pawn f7 check here uh just to try and cut off uh black's defending pieces here and Okay, we see, but I think uh, I think I have just checkmate here, isn't that just checkmate? Because if I capture here, then that rook is immune due to the uh, swallow's tail checkmate pattern. Because if king takes, then rook h1 is uh, checkmate, and I think I am just getting through. Uh, I'm just getting through here because the only alternative is king g8 and then we have queen takes g6, um, check king f8 and queen g7 checkmate. So this could be a very nice game unless I have uh, somehow missed something. So if king takes, rook h1 is going to be checkmate um and uh, yeah so how was this game was this a brilliant attacking game by me 
or was it uh, just uh, me being a maniac and uh, my opponent blundering um, in one critical position? Maybe we should analyze uh, the game at some later stage. What do you think? What do you think? I think my opponent may be rage quitting. So if you see a edit here, uh, it's because nothing is going to happen while my opponent is running out their clock. Uh, it is either that or they are calculating a lot of moves ahead but to be honest this is a very forcing move king takes uh, h6 is checkmate in one move so the only legal alternative is king g8 queen takes g6 check king f8 uh, is the only move and then queen g7 is checkmate and in fact also rook h8 would also be checkmate so that's uh, that is the game okay my opponent ran out their clock that is of course their prerogative i don't know if i'm choosing that correctly does that mean that that is something they are allowed to do uh, it is not something i would advise uh, because it's sort of a negative sum game, you know. It's like cheating. It's, you know, it can uh, temporarily satisfy some need you have, like feeling of winning or getting revenge. But it is the sort of thing where you are, by your action, you are um, influencing the environment or the milieu you are inhabiting in a negative way uh, and in order to even that out other players would then be incentivized to have the same behavior resulting in a worse experience for everyone um, but there's nothing uh, there's nothing illegal about running out your time so Let's see here. We will just have another online match. We will be over leeches. Five minutes plus five seconds. And we can be any any color. And let's go. So we are playing against somebody else. Okay. They open with e4, we will try the Sicilian defense. The Sicilian, the Sicilian, the Sicilian. And I think we will just invite the open Sicilian here, which is where they play pawn to e4 and we exchange it with our c pawn. That is what signals. Okay, they are playing, I think this is called the Russell Limo version. Um, Okay, but this, I don't know where they go back like that. Looks like they just kind of gave me a free move. Um, I'm pretty sure the, the normal way to handle this would be to... Okay, so they are trying to... They are trying to go for some easy checkmate here. Um, I could play a move like knight e5 to uh, protect that, um, which I kind of like, uh, but also a move like just uh, pawn to e6 protects against this uh, attack and it opens up an attack from my queen uh, on this knight that I can now come in and capture and um, I basically have a winning position the castle I will try to nullify all chances they have of an attack here by playing knight to e5 this forks the knight madam and the bishop hello and uh, now 
they will have to play the queen somewhere where it protects. Um, where it protects the the bishop. And so um, I think I will just move my queen out of the way of any potential discovered attacks here. Just a simple move like maybe just like queen g6 here would be pretty good so that I am now not being attacked by uh, this bishop here after they open the game up. I will just develop my pieces sensibly here. Um, I am a piece ahead, so I will just play this position solidly, not try to be fancy, just see if I can get this home on, bring it home on technique here. So I could sacrifice a pawn by playing bishop takes bishop take knight, queen takes knight, check knight, d7, queen takes b7, could actually sacrifice two pawns with rook b8. Or I could just castle in that situation and say that I have a lot of development going on. I think I will just... No, I can't castle. So... So this is actually a little bit of a problem. Um, except that I may just castle now. Um, because it's threatening c7 check. But... I don't think it will be that too much of a problem if I just castle like so. So if knight c7, I just play rook on a8 to c8, and then what are they going to do? So um, yeah, it's it's a the strategy my opponent is is using here is uh, maybe something many improving or beginning chess players try out. Uh, if you go through this game, you can see they attack with two pieces. I defend against that. They attack with two pieces. They are, now they're attacking with these two pieces. And I have a lot of pieces here. I'm having, I have seven, uh, 15 pieces here. So attacking 15 people, 15 guys with, uh, with two guys. Uh, it's probably not going to end out too great. Um, should we see if we can make some sort of attack against them? How about playing something like pawn to d5? Pawn takes, pawn takes. That could open up this bishop here. I think this looks like a strong strong move, just taking a lot of control in the center and just uh, if takes, takes, yes, you can actually see that happening, takes, takes, now I may end up being able to play bishop to h3, so they would have to play g3 and then bishop takes, uh, would win the exchange at the very least, or I could also just leave the bishop there, try to go for a checkmating attack. Okay, so it goes, queen goes there. Um, and yeah, I think bishop h3. Um, they may have a move like queen g5. And then I would uh, exchange the queens. And when they recapture, I would have to move the bishop. But 
Okay, so they do it like this. That's also like okay. I will still just get the queens off the board, and this is just uh, makes the whole game much easier for me um, because I am ahead on material. So every time uh, I exchange evenly, the ratio of my advantage grows and it makes it easier for me. Also, I have the two bishops, so this open game here is, um, is pretty, it's just pretty good. Maybe I can try to go for something like pawn to c4. And if takes, then bishop c5 check. If I, in that situation, were to already have... Okay, well, so they are sort of being... They preemptively... They are preemptively... Uh, getting out of that check, that's pretty cool. So we have a minute something left on the clock. So we shouldn't be too worried. Um, maybe we can see something like here, like uh, knight c3, d4. Um, d4, so we can get this bishop here on a very strong diagonal. And we can get this knight, we can give that some maneuverability, being able to land on d5. If the knight goes to d5, we'll just chop it off, create a, create a isolated pawn that we can attack with our bishop. So, yeah, just having a good relaxed time. It uh, It's even easier to relax with chess. Like, it's always a relaxing game, I feel, if you are not, uh, if you are not, you know, um, playing for like in some tournament or something like I, and I don't I always play casually I don't care too much if I win or if I lose and it's even easier to relax with chess if uh, if you're a piece ahead uh, so we will see pawn takes and then just attack the isolated pawn very very simple chess here they will probably have to play something like rook e1 because I don't think uh, some okay they do it like this that's also possible uh, so I guess I will reroute this bishop here to go to c7 to attack the pawn play some simple simple chess these bishops would be going to be just absolute monstrous slicing over the board with their sniper laser vision here looking at the king it's oh, let's take a look at the time yeah one minute and the increment make sure we don't have to stress too much I guess these pieces here should be somewhere else so they don't hmm oh it goes further the pawn I mean that is no problem at all we'll just capture that Rook takes, king takes. Our opponent is not making this super difficult for us. Um, how about a move like bishop f6? 
with the plane of possibly going e5 or okay here so let's start by getting out of the pin king e7 so we are no longer in any potential x-ray attack and now it's time to maybe maybe try to push this bishop away and uh, i guess this pawn can go all the way pretty easily so we are a little bit pressed on time but remember guys remember we can relax we do get we do get that extra five seconds every time we make a move so we are not going to lose on time don't worry so we are just marching down with the pawns and just making sure we are not ending in any pins or anything and having a strong king here not uh, not afraid of anything here it's I have a lot you know when you're up a piece and every trade is basically a good trade then uh, you have a lot more options on every, on every move since you can just try to resolve any sort of things your opponent is trying to throw at you by just by just exchanging pieces when every when every exchange or almost every exchange is a is a good exchange then uh, it becomes quite uh, quite a lot easier to play chess so now the plan is to play e3 rook f2 take on g2 win the game so what will our opponent try what will our opponent try they don't have a lot of moves um, should we sacrifice a pawn here just to get rid of the rook I'm okay with that because now the the bishop here is going to we're just going to run our opponent out of moves pretty quickly here Trying to get our our opponent in uh, something called Zugzwang, Zugzwang, Zugzwang. It's a German word, means uh, to be forced to have the move. So in chess you can't not move. Uh, so every time it's your go, you have to move a piece. And we are trying to make it so that any move our opponent makes will make their position worse. Uh, just running them out of moves so it goes here let's go back here to attack this pawn goes here we just capture they capture and we capture that one and this game is basically over we should try to not uh, fall for something uh, but we have everything under control here and uh, as long as we don't forget that we are playing on time then uh, the game is over it's just a matter of technique as they say so capture this pawn and you can see like i was ahead on material almost the entire game and now i've won a couple of pawns but it's actually the same material imbalance i have this piece and where at the start of the game that extra piece was not 
the most strong thing in the entire world? Well, now a bishop versus basically nothing is it's just uh, it's just really a force to be reckoned with because when it's unopposed, like what is my opponent even going to do? Uh, I guess I could have even just um, I mean, I, I'm not even sure I need to to save the bishop here but uh, I will so let's go here and make a queen okay, king goes here check and where is my opponent going goes here let's see if we can trap them so we are threatening checkmate and um, we are trying we are running them out of moves it's a little bit sadistic here <laughs> oh now he can go there Oh, he did capture and I'm sorry I will go here so now he has to either play this one or that one he will go there I will capture and now he has oh the king is uh, okay king goes here then I would say check Here, check. There and checkmate. So <laughs> uh, I was a little bit too excited about uh, about the technical ending there. So I just uh, missed some very obvious uh, ways I could have won that uh, earlier. I was just uh, I just had a particular pattern in mind that I was trying to achieve and. Uh, Luckily, I was I had enough time, and I was in a position that I couldn't lose. But that is, you know, that is one of the psychological uh, problems I have in chess. That I can uh, I can find something that I think looks pretty, and then I want to achieve the pretty thing. I want to get the pretty thing uh, instead of being practical and saying, okay, what is really the best way to win this game right now? That was kind of fun, uh, kind of relaxing, just an easy game of chess. And I think we should do one more. What do you think? Should we do one more? We have the black pieces again. Oh, we are playing against d4. Here's the big question. Will they play pawn to c4? Will we be allowed to play the Budapest defense? Sadly, no. We will try a flexible setup because this sort of Jobava system they got going here it looks like the Jobava London or something uh, it's just something that I have really no no significant knowledge about whatsoever okay this is a little strange they are very quickly going for an exchange of this bishop for this bishop like you would in a Sicilian dragon and now they well this position is certainly original um, I think I will castle now while I have the chance um, And then I will see if I can undermine the e4 square. That could be a plan we could go with. Perhaps, perhaps. So they go 
cover this immediately. Um, so if I play King H7, they may then play a move like pawn to pawn to e5, then knight back. I think I will try it just to explore this opening here where I give my opponent a lot of a lot of space but I also get potential counter-attacking chances um, so I am looking at pawn to e5 okay they do something completely different that's also very interesting Um, but now of course, now of course I can, like, so this is fascinating. Fascinating idea. So they, they are now thinking about pawn to e5. And they, they were afraid of knight h5, so they put the bishop on e2 so they could chop it off. So how about I play pawn to d6 here. Then I can maybe go for a plane like pawn to c6, b5, b4, chase away this knight and undermine e4, as I was discussing earlier. Um... I think I will speed up my play a little bit here. Looks like my opponent is uh, is pretty strong. They're playing like a very devious and cool opening skirmish here. I think they're playing very well indeed. I could uh, this could be a much tougher game than. The one before and the one before they my opponent was okay so they go for this i will try for the b5 b4 plane trying to undermine e4 okay they do play e4 themselves so can i capture that Or could I just go knight d5, knight? I think I just capture that. But uh, it's very, very... Okay, capture like this. That makes sense. Of course, I can now get rid of some attacking potential from my opponent here. And they capture like so. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so where do I go with my knight is the question. I guess just guess just uh, knight h5 but knight g4 is also possible maybe but no then there's also a move like a pretty crazy move like knight d7 with the plane of I like knight d7 actually like knight d7 so what is this position like it's very interesting my opponent has a lot of a lot of interesting ideas playing some very enterprising chess here so I want to go to the c5 square with my knight or alternatively the b6 square 
from the B6 square I have many nice entry points into the position. So, okay, they do castle. Then I think just knight. Where do I want to go? Here or here? I like I like knight I like knight b6. I'm not sure exactly why. Um but if I can complete my development I will be pretty happy here. But uh, I didn't gain any sort of advantage out of the opening I would say my opponent is still pressing still doing a great job um, so they they threw an opening at me that I didn't know much about I reacted in an improvised manner so I don't think I have like a, a horrible horrible uh, position but also I wouldn't say I have a very strong position either and maybe I should find okay so rook here makes a lot of sense um, and then I think knight oops sorry about that knight d7 after rook f2 to d1 um, the problem of course is if my opponent plays pawn to b4 now if they play pawn if they do play pawn to b4 I could be in I could be in trouble okay they don't so they allow me they do allow me to play knight c5 but I want to maybe I want to play knight c5 here. It's a very fascinating, interesting position we've got going on here. If I get my bishop out somehow, then uh, then I could be doing okay. Um, maybe. Okay, so that's a pretty interesting move. Guess I have to play Bishop B seven. Still have about a minute. And um I mean Rook takes either Rook. Is just capture with the other rook. There could be some benefit to capturing with the bishop that I don't see. Um, and the problem is my opponent has control of the file, the D file. Um, that's a big problem, maybe or maybe it's not. Um, I may have the very nice move. Okay, so they play here. Um, and should I? I'm not sure why. But I actually like this move. Not completely sure why. I think something like knight b8, knight a6, uh, with a plan of going pawn to c4. But I could be missing stuff all over the shop here. Um, I may have knight to. I 
we have knight here now. That was sort of what I was hoping. And then maybe this e5 pawn will become weak. Uh, we are both uh, in a bit of a time scramble. Okay, wow, so taking there, but that's a big mistake, I think. So capturing there, now it gets completely wild. It gets completely crazy now. Uh, I think we will see rook takes. Uh, then then pawn takes so apparently I lost on time so I think there was uh, some miscommunication between the server and my phone um, so what's this situation like um, here they have to capture like that and so if I play rook d8 um, If I play rook d8, I think I have a very, very strong position here. Because if they try something like to block like this, I have check picking up the, the piece. If they try something like this, I may have just captures. Um, and of course, if they try to capture the pawn or whatever, this will end in checkmate and this doesn't work because this is actually well it's not checkmate exactly but this looks very good for me so I am guessing a move like this after rook d8 so like move like g3 to be able to come here and then it's just a fascinating position where I may be able to capture here and go for this pawn and it's just a fascinating position. Okay, let's play some more chess. Let's say we want to play a new game. It can be any color. We want to play five minutes plus five seconds every move. We would like to play online via leeches against someone random. Now we are searching for a game. I will put this out of sight, but put it on the screen probably. Okay, we have the white pieces, so we turn the board around and open up with a very nice pawn to D. So they play knight to f6, we will play the explosive move, boom, pawn to c4, hoping maybe that they will play the Budapest defense, no, they are going for a modern setup, let's play knight to c3, preparing to play pawn to e4, like so, just taking control of the center. They will say, okay, they don't want us to advance to e5. That's completely okay. We play knight uh, bishop to e2 so that we can go for a hack attack, a little pet system of mine. I think I played this in one of my very, very first videos here on YouTube uh, something like eight years ago. How crazy is that? Eight years ago. And it's only like two years ago this channel actually picked up steam and 
now we have a lot of a lot of subscribers here but for the longest time it was only the really core audience uh, and me and now we are like this huge family how cool is that okay so we close the center here i will go like a for as an homage to that old 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 video i will uh, see if i can go for my pit system with a knight to h2 and g4 which is a kind of a ridiculous uh, opening idea but it is my own it's not something i learned in a book it's something that i developed myself okay we can't do it right now because this queen is pinning the knight so now the e4 pawn is hanging i will make a quick decision and play bishop d2 to break the pin and set up a potential discovered attack okay queen queen d2 how about um okay i, I guess against this i guess against this we will have to play something like queen c2 to protect the pawn here on, on b2 and uh, maybe we have to give up on the ludicrous idea of going knight h2 and pawn to g5 g4 uh, for the time being uh, and this is of course uh, coming up with the queen uh, attacking on both flanks coordinating with this bishop is of course one of the ways that we can that black can meet this uh, hack attack style I'm doing so I will now uh, stop or I will uh, I will say okay I'm not going to hack with this h pawn go with the hairy attack go Harry Ginger GM would be proud no I am just going to play this a bit more positionally I guess we will see something like bishop takes here. So I guess we will play rook b1. They do play bishop takes. We will recapture with our own bishop. And then they play knight here. We go back with our bishop so that we keep protection of the c4 pawn and we want to play pawn to f4 now and maybe we can in effect begin some attack because it is actually not clear to me how they are going to stop pawn to f4 and um, i do open up a diagonal towards my king but i would say uh, that i am not overly concerned with that i have the battery of the queen and bishop here on the dark squares so i have some defensive capabilities on the ready and now we go for this okay so in this situation i was thinking that maybe pawn to if five would be a strong move so i am leaving a lot of dark square weaknesses um, and that could of course become a problem uh, with something like knight d7 and bishop check so i would have to at some point play rook f3 okay so we see this move here so quite nice uh, attacking chess by our esteemed opponent here let's let's try to move some pieces a little bit closer to our opponent's king hopefully without treading on our toes our own toes i'll just check the time 
I have almost three minutes, so... Okay, so we see Knight back. That is... I'm very happy about that move, because it means I can chop this Knight off without it being reinforced by... Um, by the other one. Of course now we do see the possibility of this check here. Um, but I think I can either play bishop back to block the check, or I can play king h1. Um, but I think in in actuality actually okay knight here so let's first of all get rid of this dangerous bishop king takes let's see if we can get in with the queen now a move like move like so Let's, let's think a little bit, let's pause and allow ourselves to think a little bit, because I think we will see a move like rook h8, h8. that could be coming. Um, maybe in fact we should try to open up a little bit. Um, with a move such as pawn takes g6 first. Okay, so pawn takes. And now maybe we can get in with the queen. Um, I think we will try to get in with the queen like this and then see if we can do something like pawn to e5. So this is a position of attack and counterattack. We are attacking them, but they are certainly also looking for attacking options against us as well. I, I don't know whose position is better. It is to a player of my level. This is an unclear position uh, with level material and both sides going at their opponent's king. And maybe this is one of those type of positions where a strong player, like a grandmaster, would easily say, oh, but there is this feature of the position uh, that makes it a comfortable advantage for black or for, for white or some like there these positions that to a mortal player like me uh, seems interesting and complicated and unbalanced uh, a lot of those have a very concrete evaluation that stronger players can can see our opponent let's just check how much time we have a minute 40 and our opponent is a minute 25 and they are taking a good think here i would say a move such as rook h8 could be on my radar here um, with the plan of going to h5 to chase away the queen. So let's say rook h8, pawn to e5, pawn takes, pawn, queen takes, pawn, and then rook h5, and I may be in serious trouble there. Um, also this pawn here on, on h5 is just going to fall if I don't uh, if I'm not if I won't be able to to protect it somehow uh, let's see have my our opponent may have disconnected because they are not playing a move so that's a bit that's a bit sad of course uh, that we will maybe win this game on time here and in a couple of seconds. Um, so 
So what happened there? We won the game on time, I think. Or maybe there was some connection issue. So um, school is out. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much. Uh, I, I'm so happy that we have this little community together. I am so, so happy that you guys are always so kind and so cool and so nice to talk to. I hope you had a good time. I certainly did. Thanks for watching. I hope I will see you in the next video.